Hello, class. Um, okay, so this exercise uh, is our looping background exercise. Now, what is a looping background? Well, let's think of an example where we see it in use. A lot of 2D animation that we see uh, on television or even in film, but usually in television when the where the budget is maybe a bit lower. So let's think of maybe The Simpsons. Uh, chances are they are using looping backgrounds. So what it is, is we have a character or uh, more than one character walking along or running or flying. Uh, there's some sort of motion happening. And um, in the background, there are buildings or trees or mountains or grass or something in the background moving to really emphasize that our character is in motion. And very often that motion, the movement we're seeing, is is being looped. So there's been some animation created where we, we see the buildings or whatever it is in the background moving, um, and then it is being looped over, over and over again. So this saves the animator a lot of time. They just need to create one loop of the motion and then um, and then use it over and over again. So that's essentially what we're going to do here. So we put a lot of time into creating that one loop, but then then when we're done, we can use it over and over again in our animation and have it loop as long as we need it to. So essentially that is what we're going to be doing here. Okay, so in your exercise file for looping background, uh, uh, open up the moving background start file and you should see this pink background. Uh, if you open up your library, you'll see um, the a whole bunch of graphics already sitting in your library. So we've done, all the graphics have been created and we're going to um, uh, start assembling the animation. Okay, so first off, let's uh, double click the mountains symbol in our library and that will open up our mountains our mountain symbol now um, we're going to create some uh, mountain tops along the top here to create the illusion of snow and the way we're going to do that this is a new technique is we are going going to use uh, the lasso tool so for me it's hidden underneath the polygon tool um, so if you click and hold the polygon tool, you should find the lasso tool. If you don't see the lasso tool, uh, click down here on these three buttons or these three dots, and you may find the lasso tool within uh, all these other tools. You can drag and drop it to your toolbar. All right, so for me, it, I have it. I'm going to turn this off. All right, so let's just zoom in a little bit on this mountain on the left here. What I'm going to do is end up using the lasso tool to select an area of this mountain and then fill it with white. So let's um, let's draw the 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 patch of snow first so if you want to watch what i'm going to do here i'm just creating this irregular patch and then i'm going up and over and down and joining the lasso tool at the other end of it and you'll see that it's selected now this area notice all the dots and if you open up your properties panel you can fill it with white And if you deselect, you'll see it there. Okay, now I'm gonna do this other one. So all I'm doing is going like this, creating kind of this irregular shape and going up and over to join the other end and choosing fill color white. And we'll just do this little one here. Choose white. 
And maybe here I'll actually just go all the way over for these two mountain tops. Okay. All right, so there's our mountains. Now let's return back to our main timeline. So again, just to remind you, hit this back arrow in the upper left corner. That takes us back to scene one. And from your library, drag an instance of the mountain symbol to the stage. And you can position it kind of like this. So it the tops of the mountains are almost touching the top of your stage and it's kind of centered something like this so it will be going off stage on the left and right sides that's okay for now we're just going to leave that let's rename this layer mountains and it looks like we have an extra layer here with nothing on it so i'm just going to delete that All right, so next we're going to uh, layer in front of the mountains some hills that's gonna, that will have some trees on it. So what we're doing here is creating the illusion of depth of field. So in the background, the mountains are the farthest object from us, the viewer. And those mountains are actually going to end up not moving in our looping background but they will be key in creating the illusion of depth of field because we're going to have some hills a little closer to us in this uh, depth of field and they will be moving. So they that will create the illusion that the hills are closer to us. All right, you'll see what I mean when we start building this. So in your library, let's double click on hill. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And what we want to do is bring in a tree uh, from the library. So drag and drop a tree. Oh, my layer is locked. Um, let's create a new layer called trees. That's one thing I forgot to do here. Now drag and drop uh, a tree. Now the tree is a little large, so let's turn on our free transform tool and hold down the shift key and you can shrink it down a bit and place it wherever you like. I'm going to place this one right here. Now we're going to drag and drop several instances of the tree symbol and we're going to just hold down shift and make them all different sizes and scatter them around. They can be large, small, whatever you like. So, I don't know, maybe um, maybe around eight trees in total. We want to create the illusion of a forest. On these hills. Okay, something like that. Okay, you can lock the trees layer. And let's create a new layer called registration marks. Now, what is this? Okay, so this is going to be a temporary uh, line, a graphic that we're going to draw. And it's just temporary in that we need to uh, use it to um, guide us in creating this looping background. Okay. Now, one thing I've also noticed is that we need to turn on the grid. So let's go view grid 
and choose uh, choose edit grid and let's choose show grid and snap to grid and let's change the grid size to 20 by 20 and hit OK. This will help us draw this line that we need to draw. So turn on your line tool and in your properties, let's just make sure we've got a color. So black is fine. Uh, stroke width one is fine. And I'm just going to look to the left side of my trees here and I'm going to start right here on the grid and draw a line like that. So it's important you put this on its own layer. That way it's easy to delete when we're done what we're about to do. Okay, so now we're going to create a major part of this looping background. And for that to happen, we need to uh, stitch together three of these hill symbols together. And that's why we've drawn this line to help stitch it together accurately. And so it ends up looking like this perfect loop that we don't see any glitches in the loop. It's just going to be seamless. So let's create a new symbol now. Um, so go modify, sorry, insert new symbol. And let's create a new symbol called hill strip. And in your library, drag and drop three hill symbols to the stage. I'm going to zoom out a bit. You can just drag them in and then we're going to need to move them. Now we, we probably want to disable snap to grid right now because it could make things more difficult. So I'm going to go view uh, snapping and turn off snap to grid. All right. So let's take a look at what I've done here so I want to I'm gonna really zoom in on this I want to make sure they're together like that so there isn't a gap between them you can also use your align tool But you can see the objects will still snap together. We just want to make sure there's no gap. Now we're going to be able to come back to these and correct any gaps that we end up seeing after we remove these registration marks. But what we have here is the beginnings of our loop. So our um, hill is going to be moving to create the illusion of our character moving. And we're going to see these hills passing by and they'll be looping in a way where we're not, uh, it'll be seamless. So it will end up looking very seamless. Um, okay, so let's go back to scene one, or back to our main timeline here. And uh, first things first, we can switch our mountains layer to outlines. So a reminder on how to do that is to click on this um, this rectangle here in the mountains layer and that will turn our mountains into outlines just uh, while we're working on it okay uh, so let's um, just seeing where I'm at okay so let's create a new layer 
above mountains called hills. And let's extend both layers to frame 160. So scroll over to 160 and let's hit F5 on both layers. That's how long our animation is going to be. And I'm just going to move my playhead back to uh, frame one. And now uh, on the hills layer, let's lock the mountains layer. On the hills layer, let's drag an instance of hill strip to the stage. And we want its left edge uh, touching the left edge of the stage. And one way to do that accurately is to select the hill strip on the stage, turn on the align panel, make sure align to stage is turned on, and then uh, align left and center. So left, uh, align left edge and align vertical center. Okay, so now we're going to create a motion tween of our hill strip moving along. So right click on the hill strip and choose create motion tween. And now our next step in this motion tween is to create the, um, the keyframe where our hill is going to end up. So let's drag our playhead to the very end to 160, hold down shift and drag your hill strip over. So the next registration mark, the second one, is up against the left edge of the stage. So I'm going to zoom in to fine tune this. And you can either have the left edge of the registration mark meet the left edge of the stage. I think that's the best way to go. If Notice how our registration mark is one pixel wide. So I have the left edge of it touch the left edge of the stage. And that should do it for us. So it should look something like this. Now, if I were to hit uh, control enter to test this out, look what ends up happening. It loops, starts back at the beginning and it's seamless. Awesome, okay. So now that we've created the loop, we can go into the hill strip uh, symbol. So double click hill strip. And in your timeline panel, uh, actually, no, sorry, double click hill. That's where our registration mark lives. Double click hill uh, in the library and then choose registration marks layer and hit uh, delete. Now, if we hit control enter, let's take a look at what it looks like. So you may see a little gap like what I've got here. You can see the lines. That's just this really small gap. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is go into my hill strip layer, zoom in a bit. And I'm just going to move the second hill graphic over by maybe one or two arrow clicks on my keyboard. So I'm going to select the second one and hit left. Uh, I'll do it twice just to be safe. Move it over two clicks. And then that means the third graphic here, I have to move it over four clicks. So I have to make up for the two uh, that were moved over for the second 
hills graphic and now two more times to move it over so now i'm going to test my mo movie again and let's see and there we don't see the line anymore it's seamless and it's looping pretty nicely so if you see a sudden jump in your loop if it looks kind of jittery uh, when it, it loops back, uh, then you need to go back a number of steps and maybe rebuild your hills or adjust where the hills sit in the hill strip symbol. So mine turned out pretty good. I'm going to move on. So you can see we're creating the illusion. Our mountains are in the background. They're just staying put and our hills are a bit closer to us. So that's why they're moving. All right. Okay. Now we're going to follow similar steps in creating another layer. Uh, and we're going to build some a looping, some looping rocks. And the rocks are... are um, going to be closer to us so they're actually going to be moving faster uh, again to create that illusion of depth of field so that means we're in rather than dropping in three rocks graphics with registration marks we're going to actually drop in four because our rocks uh, strip will be moving quicker uh, okay, so let's take a look at how to do that. Uh, double click your rocks uh, symbol. And let's turn on snap to grid again. So view, snapping, snap to grid is on. And I'm going to create a new layer called registration mark. And I'm going to turn on my line tool again. And I'm going to draw this registration mark so it goes along the left edge of my rocks. Okay. So now we're going to create a new symbol called rocks strip. So go insert new symbol. And we'll call it rocks strip okay and let's drag four instances of the rocks graphic to the stage you may need to zoom out a bit also you're going to want to turn snap to grid off so go to view snapping and turn off snap to grid so we want four of these rocks graphics Turn on your selection tool and you can position them. So I'm just going to position them roughly here. And now I'm going to zoom in a bit to fine tune it. Now, knowing what we know about what happens when we delete the registration mark and we get a little gap maybe we want to just move them over a little bit uh, but that's a little risky unless you know what you're doing um, i'm just going to have them snap to each other and then i'll be able to fine tune it with more accuracy after we remove the registration marks So I'm, I'm just having them snap to each other. Okay, there's our rock strip. Now let's go back to scene one, our main timeline. And let's lock the hills layer and create a new layer called rocks. And drag an instance of rock strip to the stage. So again, let's move our playhead back to zero. And we're going to have the rocks 
uh, the left edge butt up against the left edge of the stage. So you can position it kind of like this. We're going to see um, some pink between the trees and the rocks here, but that's okay. We're going to end up putting some water in there. There's going to be a lake between the rocks and our hills. So position it like this. Use your align tool. Maybe just use it to align the left edge. That's all. And now we can convert this into a motion tween. So right click on the rocks and choose create motion, motion tween. Now move your playhead back uh, to the very end, frame 160. And we're going to move the rocks over two registration marks. So hold down shift and move it over one, two. And this will create that illusion of depth of field because the rocks will be moving more. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and just use my uh, the arrow keys on my keyboard to adjust it. So the left edge of my registration mark is up against the left edge of the stage. Now let's hit control enter and see how this is looking. That's looking good. So now you can really see the depth of field. So our next step is to get rid of that registration mark and then make some uh, some adjustments. So click on double click rocks in your library and delete the registration marks layer. And now let's see what it looks like by testing our movie. So I'm seeing a little bit, a little line. So we don't want that. We want it to be seamless. So I'm going to double click rocks strip, zoom in a little bit and select my second rock strip and maybe just move it over by two arrow clicks. One, two. Now I'm going to go to the next one and do those same two plus two more. And then the fourth one here will be uh, one, two, three, four, and then two more. One, two. Let's see if that did the trick. Yep, no more line. It is seamless. It's looking good. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to go back to our main timeline here. We'll zoom out. We're going to add in a, just a simple graphic of blue water in between the hills and the rock layer. So select the hills layer, then click new layer. We can lock the rocks layer, by the way. Let's name this new layer water and turn on your rectangle tool. And in your properties panel, let's choose a fill color of like a nice aqua blue. And we don't need a stroke, so you can turn the stroke off. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Oh, you know what? The water layer is actually uh, behind the hills layer too. So if you draw your rectangle, you can move your layer underneath hills should look something like this. You might want to change the mountains, uh, turn the outlines off of mountains so you can kind of see what this looks like. Let's see. Let's hit control enter to test it out. All right, let's do something similar. We're going to create uh, some ground here at the bottom so we can get rid of this pink. Let's create, um, let's lock, first of all, lock the water layer. 
And let's insert a new layer on top of the lake layer or the water layer. And we'll call it um, road. And choose your rectangle tool again. And let's choose a fill color that's kind of a lighter green than our hills. So maybe. Something like that, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle to fill that bottom space. Test my movie. All right, that's looking good. It's really coming along. Okay, so you can lock the road layer now. And let's create a new layer on top of the whole stack. So select the rocks layer, choose new layer, and let's call this layer walking boy. Or just boy. I think the instructions say just call it boy. Uh, but that so it doesn't really matter. So in our uh, library, we should see uh, a symbol called walking boy. And this is this should look familiar. This is the boy that we created. Um, within our walk cycle exercise. So you can see we're putting it all together now that this boy will now have some a background um, as he is walking along. Okay, so uh, we've got our new layer walking boy or boy and bring an instance of the boy to the stage. And we need to shrink them down a bit. So uh, turn on your transform panel. Make sure the width and height are locked. And let's shrink him down to 75%. And we can position the boy right here in the middle of the road, in the middle of the screen. So our boy isn't actually going to be moving. But the background will be moving, creating the illusion of our boy walking. So let's hit control enter and see what that looks like. So that way our character can be talking, can be doing something, can be walking with another character and they're just there. Um, oh, it looks like I have a, I added a little graphic here by accident. I'll delete that. Uh, and our character's just walking along while the background is moving. Let's delete that. Okay. So we're going to add a few more finishing touches to this to, to again emphasize the illusion of our character walking. So let's lock the boy layer. And let's create a new layer on top of the stack called flowers. And let's move our playhead back to frame one. All right, so from the library, drag an instance of flowers to the stage. And let's position them uh, on the right off stage, right, like that. And we're going to create, use a classic tween to animate our flowers. You can use a motion tween if you like, uh, but uh, I wanted to show you, some of you may ask, well, when do we use a classic tween? This would be a good example. It's just a very simple animation um, and we just need a very simple tween. So a classic tween will do. All right, so let's insert a keyframe on frame 60. So right click on frame 60 of the flowers layer, choose insert keyframe. And while in that position still on the timeline, hold down shift and move your flowers off stage left. And you can right click anywhere between frame one and 60 of the flowers layer and choose create a classic tween. So there's our flowers moving by. I'm going to hit 
control enter and see what this looks like. And the flowers are moving faster than the rocks. Again, adding to, to the illusion of uh, depth of field. Now we want it, the flowers to look maybe a little, a little bit more random. So we're going to uh, add them again. So if you look to your flowers layer, we only have an animation running to frame 60. So let's copy, and this will save us some time. Let's copy from frames one to 60. So select frame one of the flowers layer, hold down shift, then select frame 60, right click on what you've selected and choose copy frames. Now shift click frames 101 to 160. So select frame 101, shift click 160, right click on that selection and choose um, Well, let's, um, paste and overwrite. Yes, paste and overwrite uh, frames will do. In the instructions, I do say to insert a blank keyframe after frame 60, and that would delete everything after it. But this is fine. Paste and overwrite will do. So let's test that out. See what this looks like. So we'll see the flowers appear again, and then again. And it looks a little more random. Okay, so that's our exercise, folks. Now again, I wanna see this being used in your assignment. So figure out a, a point in your assignment where you can create a uh, looping background with uh, our walk cycle happening.